culture is not rooted in a race or religion. It's rooted in a set of ideas. You know what those ideas are? A meritocracy. If you work hard and play, if you work hard and play by the rules, you can succeed. That's an American value. The thing about this talking point is, and while Charlie Kirk is quite successful among like conservative youth, this idea is gaining less and less traction among people, especially Gen Z as time goes by. This idea, like having a rich, wealthy trust fund baby who is ha like who has like multiple houses and like nice cars and and all that, someone as wealthy as Charlie Kirk, Andrew Tate, um, any of these big right wing figures, like people who actively show off their wealth, even generally speaking, um, having them tell you, if you work as hard as me, then you can be as successful as me. But then it's, like, obvious that's not the case. Like, that that really only flies with the kids who've never worked a job before. The first time you've been fired for no reason, like, laid off, or the first time you've just gotten reamed out by your boss for no fucking reason, the first time you realize that, like, your, your employer is looking for every opportunity to fuck you, and get every last bit of work they can out of you for as little money as possible. Like, once they figure out kind of the situation through life experience, tend to lean more left. It's been more and more common among, like, every generation of workers since millennials. You know what else is American value? It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter where you came from. I'm sorry? Well, no. It, I mean, that's not the American values. The Constitution clearly, I mean, does not do what, what you don't look like. <laughs> I mean, doesn't the, what is it, the 13th Amendment or is it the 14th Amendment? I feel so bad for forgetting. But doesn't the amendment that, like, abolishes slavery say slavery is not allowed except for in the case of punishment? Also, as much as conservatives try to pretend it's not the case, this country was built on slavery. Slavery was the practice that built the entire American South's agriculture. And agriculture was the American South, okay? Like, it was the North... The Yankees, the progressives, those city slickin' factory workers that, like, fought against slavery. They fought a civil war to preserve slavery on the, on, in the South. In fact, in their secession document of the South, they list slavery as the reason they did so. But no, hold on. But the Constitution the is completely case. agnostic to race. Oh, man, where, does it say, where does it say once about skin color in the Constitution? Africans so... Charlie Kirk is almost like a time capsule of 2016 era talking points. Who remembers the um the voter ID laws and I think it was South Carolina that the Supreme Court back in the day shot down. You see the Republicans back in 2016, 2017 maybe. It might have been leading up to the midterms. This is years ago. Um the Republicans in one of the Carolinas tried to pass a voter ID law and what happened was the Republicans in that state made a committee where they specifically searched for what IDs, what forms of identification were most commonly used by people of color, primarily black and Hispanic Americans, those that vote Democrat generally. And then they pushed forward a bill that would essentially no longer make those forms of identification valid. And then they looked for the forms of identification that are the statistically least common for black and Hispanic voters in that uh, uh, state to get and then um, try to enforce that as the type of ID you would have to have in order to vote. Now, this was seen by the Supreme Court, and it was, of course, shot down. Not only was it shot down by the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court went on to say this voter ID law was clearly made to surgically tar or sorry, targets black and, uh, and Hispanic communities with almost surgical precision was the term used by the Supreme Court when referring to this uh, voter ID law, that they targeted black and Hispanic communities with almost surgical precision in their attempts to try to exclude them from their uh, likelihood of getting these IDs. Now, Republicans, even after the Supreme Court shot down this voter ID law and and call and pointed out how clearly racist it was, continued to defend it. And do you know what the defense was? Who here knows what the defense was? Because Charlie Kirk just made the same defense. One of the most common defenses used by Republicans to argue there is no systemic bigotry in this country. I'll answer the question for you guys, because you're, you're being a bit slow tonight. Um, nope, you guys are all off. Where, on paper, does it say 
Exactly, War Penguin. You got it. You got some. You got it right there. Where on the paper does it mention skin color, race, sex, whatever it may be? They will demand that you point to where in the bill, the Constitution, where on paper they specifically lined out how racist they are. They, they will tell you, show me exactly where this bill explains how they want to oppress black people. And then you can, th then I'll agree with you that it's racist. Obviously, not even in the 1960s did many bills like this get that overt. In fact, it was in the civil rights movement that euphemism for racism really started to get it really popular among republicans you know you saw terms like forced busing and stuff get popular like in response to the civil rights movement that is when the republicans realized they had to start couching their hateful rhetoric in euphemism and dog whistling and that's what they do now and so as long as they keep up the dog whistling and they keep the mask on then they can ask where on paper did we say we want to oppress black people they won't accept that well, the, uh, the outcome is objectively worse for black people. That, that isn't enough. They will ask for you to prove intent. And they'll never be honest about that intent. That's part of the whole game, right? Slaves. So the 13th Amendment abolished slavery. Yeah, yeah. The so that's when in the it was Constitution. The 13th Amendment says, except for in the case of punishment, which is carried forward in American prisons today, where you work a job, usually... By force, like there are many, many prisons. I don't, as far as I know, there's no prisons where you can say no. They force you to work a job. If you go to federal prison for long enough, they eventually force you to work a job. And I don't even know what happens if you refuse. I think you get put in solitary. I think they'll sh throw you into like a solitary housing unit. Yeah, that's slavery. They get paid like eight cents an hour or something like that. Like literally like five bucks a week on the highest of high ends. Like, we're talking tens of dollars a month and, like, compelled labor. Value I'm defending written. the Constitution as it is today. Oh, as it is today. Yeah, okay. so as it is today. The Constitution okay. is agnostic to race and applies equal application of law to all people. As yeah. the Constitution has been ratified and amended, explain to me how that what I'm saying is incorrect. So, so if, if that... Okay, hold on. I feel like this girl is a plant. Does that... Does that shirt say feminist or that, that sweater? Does that sweater, is that just a white sweater or, or hoodie that says feminist in black? That, that feels like that's somebody who was paid by Charlie Kirk to, st to, to look like a, a woke person. Okay, here, put on this hoodie. We had the word feminist printed onto it and, and look like you're some woke triggered college kid. Yes, it does. It very well could be. It, okay. Do they make shirt like hoodies or shirts that just say feminist on it? That is the most on the nose clothing I could possibly imagine. I've never met somebody in all my time of the online left that I would believe would wear something like that unironically.